Hey guys, and welcome to another video. I just decided to make a short throttle stop uh, tutorial because some people asked, and uh, yep, here it is. So, first of all, this software is free to use. You can just go on Google, type throttle stop, and you will find it on techpowerup.com, and you will download it from there. It's quite easy. Quite easy. Now, when it comes to undervolting, you will need to know uh, some things. Do not worry about breaking anything as long as uh, you will follow these steps that I'm about to tell you. So do not be afraid that you're gonna break your system. When you undervolt, you won't break anything. When you overclock and increase your voltage, that's when uh, things get scary and you can break stuff. But right now, we will undervolt, so there's no risk in that. We will get blue screens if our system is unstable, but that's pretty much it, nothing else. Now, here on the left side, we have some options. And what you need to care about is nothing. Do not change anything here. They won't impact your performance, your undervolt, your whatever. Just leave the settings the way they are. Uh, and yeah, you only have one option here, is disable turbo. If you want to disable the turbo boost, but this will decrease your performance a lot. So just don't do it. Just don't change anything in here. Speed step is for efficiency, reduces, uh, it's pretty much reduces your CPU core when you're not uh, doing anything that uh, really takes your computer to a high usage. So pretty much do not, do not check anything in here. Just leave it the way it is. Now, you also have a button in here that says uh, turn on and off. This button is only for clock mod and set multiplier. If you're not gonna use these two functions, do not bother on uh, pressing this button because it won't do anything. Alrighty. Now, when it comes to undervolting, we will click on Fiverr in here. And by default, this one will be uh, unchecked. You'll have to check it, unlock adjustable voltage, go to CPU core, and you'll have to go to offset voltage. And here, by default is usually zero, you'll have to increase it to minus 50. And I suggest you start with this. This amount is pretty much stable on whatever CPU usually and should work on most of them. And you'll have to select here the third option, save voltages immediately and click apply. Afterwards, we will go to CPU cache and the cache also has to be undervolted because there's some benefit in here as well. But the cache doesn't have to be undervolted that much. You usually uh, undervolt the cache by 50% of the amount that you used on the CPU core. So if, so if I undervolted the CPU core by minus 50, I will undervolt the CPU cache by minus 25. So that's pretty much it. I click apply, okay, and whatever. Afterwards, we will have to test the, the stability of this undervolt. So I suggest using a tool like 3 Mark Time Spy and run the CPU score, uh, the CPU benchmark a few times to see if your system is stable or not. You can also test some games and see if, if everything's fine and you're not getting any blue screens. So as far as you don't get any blue screens, you are usually stable, but you will find that out uh, after a few days actually, because that's the best benchmark, just long-term testing. So afterwards, if your system is stable, you can just keep pushing the uh, CPU offset voltage, the CPU core, by minus 0 0.5. So we will go from minus 50 to minus 55. You will click apply afterwards. You will test again. If everything's fine, keep pushing it, minus 60, and so on. So this is a basic rule. Just keep going to the point where you get blue screens and your system is unstable. Don't, also, don't forget to change the cache uh, at the same time. You can keep pushing the core without uh, changing the cache. It's not something mandatory, but you should always change it because there's some benefit in here as well. If the cache is undervolted, you will also get a small increase in performance in benchmarks uh, as well. If you'll test the scores, you'll see that you'll get a small increase as well. So this is pretty much a basic rule. That's pretty much it, almost. But uh, I will uh, tell you some things if you want to uh, keep doing this. So. If you want to increase your performance uh, besides undervolting, something that you can do is to increase uh, the average frequency of your CPU. So here on the left, I have all my cores and with uh, the respective multipliers for every single one of them, right? 
we can see that the lowest uh, CPU core is to 4.4 gigahertz because the multiplier is 44. And usually when the CPU is uh, turbo boosting, the maximum or the maximum, the average frequency will uh, usually be uh, the frequency of the lowest core. And that is 4.4. It will boost higher, but most of the time it will stay to 4.4 gigahertz. Now, if you want to get better scores or better performance overall, you will have to increase the frequency of the lowest score or the lowest scores if there are many at the same frequency, I don't know. But usually the last score is, uh, has the smallest frequency, the lowest frequency. So I can push this one to 4.6. I will click apply. And again, we will have to uh, test the system in order to see if it's stable or not. Also something, uh, something important. As you can see in here, my maximum frequency is to uh, 5.3 gig, uh, gigahertz. My CPU will never reach this, this frequency because it will get very hot to the point where, yeah, it won't do anything. It will throttle automatically once it reaches 95 degrees. So it will never reach 5.3 no matter what. It won't even reach 5 gigahertz. So what you can do here uh, is the following. Usually running all cores at the same frequency tends to lead to better performance than running them uh, at split frequencies like this. So it will never reach 5.3. It will never reach 5.0 most likely. 4.8 uh, was doable on this CPU. Now this rule doesn't apply to every single CPU, but you should uh, uh, use the following idea. So take the lowest score that you have. I had 4.4 gigahertz, right? And try to increase this 4.4 uh, gigahertz by extra 100 and apply that to all cores. Apply, that, uh, uh, apply these settings and keep testing your CPU, see if it's stable. It will usually lead uh, to better scores in benchmarks and better, better performance in games as well. So just so you know, for example, if I uh, test CSGO, the casual benchmark, the ulytical benchmark in 1080p high settings, with these settings, I'm getting 466 FPS. If I push this score to 4.8, I mean pretty much every single one of them, to 4.8, I'm getting 511 frames. So that's about, I don't know, 12, 13% increase in performance in some games that this doesn't apply to every single game, but you got the idea. Now, this is uh, what you should usually do to get the highest performance. So the highest 3D Mark score that I got was by doing this. So I increased uh, the frequency of the lowest score, which was 4.4 to 4.8. So I pushed this score by extra 400 megahertz and my average uh, turbo frequency was 4.8. So from 4.4 to 4.8, uh, it's quite considerable when, you, when it comes to benchmarks and uh, even some games that uh, usually are reliable on the CPU, like CSGO and such. So usually games that have uh, a lot of frames usually. Uh, alrighty, so if you want, for example, to get better temps by uh, manipulating the course frequency, you can just take all the course down to a specific frequency. If I take uh, all my course to 4.4, I won't see much of a difference because usually the lower score is already 4.4 and that's the frequency that my CPU will stay at most of the time. So I can check, I can uh, turn them down to 4.2, for example, and my temps will be usually in the 70s, which is great, mid 70s or, or low 70s. So these are quite great times, but at the cost of some performance, okay? So this is pretty much, you choose how you want to do this. Just start with the undervolt, see your, let's say your maximum undervolt that is stable without crashing and blue screening or anything. And from there, you can just uh, check your temps, if your attempts are okay and you have room to increase your CPU frequency and get even more performance out of it, you can do so by pushing uh, the frequency of the last core or the lowest core by extra 100, like this, right? Increase the multiplier just a bit. Test it, see your results. If everything is stable, increase it again. And we will do the same thing. Once you get a blue screen, you will stop pretty much. And you can also test benchmarks and see uh, what scores you're getting. But remember this. Running all cores at the same frequency is usually better than running them split like they are here by default because you'll never reach these frequencies no matter what. Laptops get very high, uh, very hot, excuse me. So uh, yeah, 
I don't see why they're doing this just for marketing purposes pretty much because they will never reach this frequency no matter what. So uh, yeah, running your CPU at uh, the same frequency usually leads to better performance. So just select a safe spot, see where your attempts uh, are what you actually want to achieve. And uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it guys. It's quite simple. So just keep increasing things to the point where you get a blue screen. Once you get a blue screen, you hit that wall, you can't go <laughs> past that uh, undervolt. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Do this, try 3 Mark Time Spy, play some games. It, if it's stable, keep pushing. If not, uh, that's pretty much what you got. And uh, you can also get uh, more out of your uh, undervolt or by pushing frequencies if you change your, uh, your pace. So keep that in consideration. You can change your pace from your CPU uh, to liquid metal, which is the best option but you'll have to take care and do not uh, screw things up. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Or uh, just use a normal pace like, uh, I don't know, probably Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, which is the best thermal paste, or Jelly GC Extreme or whatever option uh, is out there that uh, will perform good enough. So uh, yeah, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something from this. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment uh, section below and I will uh, help you out. Alrighty, see you in the next one. Peace.